Good morning, everyone. And whether you're with us in church or watching online, may I wish you all a very happy Easter. We pray that this season of joy will be filled with blessings for you and for your loved ones. You have everything you need in the order of service. When it comes to the time of communion, please follow directions from the stewards. Communion will be administered on all three sides of the tower crossing. If you're invited to approach the altar by walking up the centre aisle, uh, please would you kindly return by one of the two side aisles to your seat. As you leave the cathedral this morning, there will be a retiring collection and we trust that you will give as generously as you feel able to support the ministry and mission of our cathedral church and we thank you for that support. There'll be a short silence now before our Eucharist begins with the hymn Alleluia, Alleluia, hearts to heaven and voices raise.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Friends, a very warm welcome to this celebration on Easter Sunday, the day in which we remember our Lord risen from the dead, that event that transforms all of life, transforms the world, and encourages us with hope that can never be extinguished. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, on this most holy day, when our Lord Jesus was raised from death to life, we are gathered in this ancient and hallowed place to celebrate the sacred mystery of his resurrection and through his holy word and blessed sacrament to share in his victory over sin and death. As we offer our praise and thanksgiving to God, let us proclaim with great joy the triumph of his Son, the light of the world, who is Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, for all time belongs to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I don't think you're sufficiently excited. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice in his resurrection from the dead, remembering that through the paschal mystery we have died and been buried with him in baptism, so that we may rise with him to a new life within the family of his church. In the light of Christ's risen glory, let us renew the promises made at our baptism, affirming our allegiance to Christ and our rejection of all malice and evil, confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart, 
Therefore I ask, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I reject the devil. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbour? I repent of them. Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I turn to Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. Do you come to Christ, the way, the truth and the life? I come to Christ. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your sins, open your eyes to God's truth, strengthen you to do God's will and give you the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now affirm our common faith in Jesus Christ. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, who died and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, we thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith with all those who have been baptised in your name. Keep us faithful to our baptism and so make us ready for that day when the whole creation shall be made perfect in your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray that we may share in the joy of Christ's risen life. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to those assembled in the house of Cornelius. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. For the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do sit. Now, I was going to begin with a terrible joke, a very funny joke, but a terrible joke about a rabbit. But we have the national broadcaster uh, with us this morning, so I think it might be ill-advised. So I'm going to begin instead by wishing you a joyous Easter as we get into this season of hallelujahs. Praise God. That's what hallelujah literally means. It's a word that sums up the joy that pulses at the heart of our faith. I really always want to dance when I see or hear or say the word hallelujah. So if I fidget, I apologize. Now, joy is not something that can be done to us or manufactured for us. If you aren't feeling it, then watching everyone else celebrate can be a lonely thing, a bit like being the only sober past person in the room at a party. Being in a strange church full of people celebrating a strange major festival might feel similar, I think. If you are a visitor, please relax. Most of us are human. 
If you are a churchgoer elsewhere, then please accept our foibles kindly as we worship our risen Lord, as is our custom in this place. Now, if you're not normally a churchgoer and have been dragged in by some relative or friend, uh, or if you think that the whole business of someone risen from the dead sounds dodgy and a PR stunt started by the church, then please keep an open mind, for it is in that single concept that the joy of our faith resides, and it is what we celebrate today. Christ is risen. Alleluia, we shout. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia joy is what is left when the chocolate is eaten, the lilies are crinkled at the edges, and the roast lamb has become the merest burnt scrapings of a midweek cottage pie. It's the source, sort of joy that sustains us against all odds, actually, through the worst of what life can throw at us. It isn't whoop whoop de whoop most of the time, but it's an undercurrent, and greater preachers than I have described it as a baseline, a sort of enduring melody beneath the noise and pain and confusion of life. And it's a joy that quietly releases endurance and courage and hope and peace where those things seem most unlikely. It flows out of an empty tomb and it's why we say the gospel is good news. Now, the resurrection is hard to wrap your head around, I know, but it changed human history, it continues to change the present, and it will change all our futures, regardless of whether church as we know it prospers or commits political Harry Kiri. This could clearly happen. It's often been said that if you were starting a religion, you would not start here. An empty tomb is a counterintuitive selling point, to put it mildly. On the other hand, death comes to us all. It is a most democratic and inclusive institution. Nobody is excluded. So the Easter Sunday resurrection precedent is important for all men, women and children, everyone, because we can face our deaths and the deaths of those whom we love knowing that it isn't the final chapter of our story. Jesus says elsewhere, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Alleluia. Nevertheless, the church did not create the resurrection story. The resurrection story created the church. And I think today's readings illustrate that pretty well. The account in Mark's Gospel is less a happy ending than an episode of fear and disbelief. The women fled and told no one. That might well have been that. It all might have stalled with them. There is in this account no immediate joy, no happy reunion, no real indication of hope. In verses added later to Mark, we learn that the disciples refused to believe the women when they finally stammered out their story. And when he does appear to the disciples, Mark tells us that Jesus told them off for their lack of faith and their refusal to believe. So Mark's resurrection account is not a glowing success story in terms of faith and joy. But it rings true. And those of you who find the resurrection a stretch might find that even more so. For these men and women were traumatized. They had watched Jesus go from triumphal entry to the cross in five days. His pulverized, pierced body lay in a tomb guarded by a detachment of Roman soldiers. He was dead. If you strip the shirt off someone's back and then beat them with a heavy whip, nail them to a cross, hang him in the sun for six hours, run a spear through him and put him in an airless tomb for three days. The outcome is predictable. Jesus died on that cross. They all saw it. The Roman soldiers who were expert in the art of death certified it and the disciples knew it. 
which is why they believed that his cause was as dead as he was. No wonder they didn't instantly grasp the fact that he had risen. But the reading from Acts, which quotes Peter in the house of the Gentiles, is completely different. It's bold. It asserts this impossible thing as fact, marveling in the all-inclusive work of God. Something changed. The terrified fisherman who had sworn blind that he had absolutely nothing to do with Jesus is now standing up in public to say that Jesus is Lord of all and that he rose from the dead. The facts of the resurrection and their implications changed the disciples. They definitely did not create the resurrection story, but it was the making of them and the start of something new. This is nothing less than an act of God breaking in to human history in a shocking and unprecedented way. And people with eyes to see and ears to hear realize this, and we see the working of the Holy Spirit in those people as God moves them towards the people he needs to be. Peter is very clear about this. He states that God raised Jesus to life. This is important. We're not told that Jesus survived death or that the story of the empty tomb is an inspiring spiritual symbol. We're not told that the message of Jesus lives on after his death. We are told that God did something witnessed by Peter, John, and Mary Magdalene, which suddenly made visible the divine will and energy behind everything, which is calling into being the possibility, the amazing possibility of an unimaginable degree of reconciling love, a world-changing love. I recently attended a Jewish act of worship which ends with a prayer called the Aleinu, which exalts the kingship of God and prays that his kingdom will be established on earth. The version of the prayer that, I, that was used when I visited is an alternative or creative Aleinu written by a woman called Judith Chicago. It's called And Then, and it describes the kingdom of God as the end game of the reconciling love that we as Christians hope for out of the impossibility of the resurrection. It goes like this. And then all that has divided us will merge. And then compassion will be wedded to power. And then softness will come to a world that is harsh and unkind. And then both men and women will be gentle and then both women and men will be strong. And then no person will be subject to another's will. And the greed of some will give way to the needs of many. And then all will share equally in the earth's abundance. And then all will care for the sick and the weak and the old. And then all will nourish the young. And then all will cherish life's creatures and then all will live in harmony with each other and the earth. And then everywhere will be called Eden once again. Everywhere, Hereford, Gaza, Israel, Ukraine, Yemen, everywhere you might name. The Christian says that this compelling vision of the kingdom of justice and reconciliation is only possible because God raised Jesus. God acts in this way to set this vision in train, to build a community of faith which in the power of the Holy Spirit will lead the world towards the kingdom. The resurrection caused the church. It is done to us and not by us for the sake of the whole world. Really, hallelujah. For if God's will and action raised Jesus from the dead, then the world and the church do not depend upon us for their future. 
knowing human beings and what we get up to, I think that's stupendously good news. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't do our best with the gifts and talents empowered by the Holy Spirit to work for justice and reconciliation. But we, here's the spoiler, we are not the saviors of the earth. Jesus is. We have a God who acted and who still does. There is no earthly reason why this strange little Jesus movement survived his death. But through God, working in this pathetic little band of people, we see a growing transformation of hearts, lives and communities that continues today. The church did not start the resurrection story. The resurrection started the church and it keeps us going today. Behold, says the Lord at the very end of the Bible, I make all things new. And he did. Our calendar, the buildings that define the landscapes wherever his name is honoured, art and music transformed and developed to tell his story. Our response to the needy and dispossessed. So much charity, welfare, medical care springing from the living God at work in his followers. Civil rights, ethics, economic theory, all because God raised Jesus from the dead. I would not want to live in a world which had not known the resurrection. I told a visitor that I was just off to pray for peace with friends here, and he snorted derisively. <laughs> well, that's working well, isn't it? He said. I wonder if he thinks it would be better if nobody cared enough to pray for peace. What a hopeless place the world would be. The resurrection continues to affect the presence through the presence of the living Christ in the hearts and minds of those who follow him. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead can revitalize the most disillusioned and defeated person or situation. What has died in your life? What dreams, hopes, relationships, visions, people? Is there a particular sin that has you gripped? No situation is beyond Jesus' resurrection power. That is our faith. But it is faith, not concrete fact. It is the joy, the underlying power at work. Anecdotal heart stuff, provable only by what we do and what God empowers in us. The truth is that at some point the resurrection has to stop being a fact to dissect or a belief to justify or a doctrine to understand. God acted one Sunday decisively, shockingly, and in a way that we will never fully grasp. And rather than a fact to be dissected, it's a joy to subsume, a risk to take, and a life to live. Alleluia. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Father, we praise you for the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Shed his glorious light on all Christian people, that we may live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who in this joyful season are receiving in baptism your son's new life by water 
and the Spirit. Dying with Christ, may they know the power of his resurrection. Lord, hear us. We pray for all whom we know and love, both near and far. May their eyes be opened to see the glory of the risen Lord. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who suffer pain and anguish, especially those whose lives are being torn apart by the violence of war. Grant them the faith to reach out towards the healing wounds of Christ and be filled with his peace. Lord, hear us. We remember before you those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. Unite us with them in your undying love. Lord, hear us. Join our voices, we pray, Lord our God, to the songs of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Ethelbert the King, St. Thomas of Hereford, and all your saints, in proclaiming that you give us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father, and in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed us once more in paradise and opened to us the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory.
Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, Lord by, by your cross and resurrection, resurrection you have set us free. free. You, you are, are the, the Saviour of the world. Except through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power, yours for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Come to this table, not because you're strong, but because you're weak. Not because any goodness of your own gives you a right to do so, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come because he came for you, he died for you, he rose for you, and one day he'll return to take you home. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Let us pray. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who has made heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.